Hey everybody, I am very happy to be driving the new for 2022 Subaru Ascent Onyx Edition. This is a brand new trim for the Subaru Ascent for the 2022 model year, and it is an additional trim for the car which debuted in 2019. This is Subaru's biggest vehicle that they sell right now, and since its debut in 2019, only minor changes have taken place in 20 and 21 model years. So adding a new trim for 2022 is kind of the biggest change this car has seen since it debuted. And as a result, there are now five trims of Subaru Ascent. Base trim, premium, this Onyx edition, limited, and touring. Now, this is a three-row SUV, and you can get it in either seven or eight passenger configurations. The base model is only available as an eight passenger configuration, so two bench rows in the second and third rows. The premium and the limited edition trims are available in either seven passenger or eight passenger configurations. And then this Onyx edition and the Touring edition are only available in seven passenger configurations, so that is second row captain's chairs only. The base price for a 2022 Subaru Ascent is $33,790. The base price for a 2022 Subaru Ascent Onyx Edition is $39,670. And my test car did have the options package for $2,200, making the price $41,870. With all that said, I think this is a good time to pull over and show you around and inside the car. Here is a closer look at this brand new trim from Subaru, the Ascent Onyx Edition. And this particular one is painted in Abyss Blue Pearl. And are there any visual cues that make it an Onyx? Yeah, there are a few. This unique and black front grille, black side view mirror covers, Onyx Edition badge, StarTex material on the seats, and Onyx Edition floor mats. Onyx Edition Subaru Ascents are also the lowest trim to get the 20 inch wheels and wouldn't you know it, they are painted in black. Wheels on the base trim are 18 inches. Looking at the car from the front, you know, it's pretty ubiquitous in terms of your typical family SUV these days, but it's certainly not a bad looking SUV. And it's pretty obvious that it's a Subaru because you have this massive Subaru badge right on the front grille. I do also like the shape of the headlights and the projector beam and the daytime running lights and all that. And down low, you have some fog lights as well. Looking at the car in profile, you can see that it is a pretty long vehicle and built for three rows of space. I'll go ahead and put the dimensions of the car up right now to get a sense of how long it is. This is also a good time to mention that I have a full set of specs in the description. And from here, this is a good time to show you these elevated and large roof rails on the car as well. As we walk towards the back, here is a look at this nice rooftop mounted spoiler you know, for all that needed downforce. And when you get to the back, you know, the pretty ubiquitous family SUV shape continues. But one thing that Subaru does that I really appreciate is no fake exhaust. We have real dual exhaust tips here and here, and they're pretty nice with this polished metal on the end. All right, let me show you the cargo space. You get 18 cubic feet of storage behind the third row, and there are a couple little hooks right here and down here. And over here, you get a charge port. But if you need more room for space and less room for people, easy enough to fix, just pull on these straps here. And now you have 47 cubic feet of storage space and room for four. Still need more space? And now you have 86 cubic feet of storage and room for you and a passenger. All right, let's check out the inside. I just want to briefly say that I don't want to go into the third row, but I'm going to go into the third row for you guys. There are multiple options. You can pull this handle here or you can pull this handle up here and one motion. The second row slides forward really easily. So I have easy access to the third row but I'm just not feeling the space for adults. And I'm right. 
I have uh, plenty of leg room, but the seat's not folded back. But I am definitely pinched for headroom. I'm leaning forward, and still I have negative three inches of headroom. Um, I have the seat bottoms are very low, so I have very little thigh support, and my knees definitely have more than a 90 degree bend in them. And if I move the seat back, uh, ah, ah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can adjust it so it fits, but you know, I also have negative space for my knees as well. This third row is for kids, and I'm sure the kids would be very comfortable back here. But uh, on the plus side, you do have plenty of space for cup holders, and that is on both sides. But if you want to fit three people back here, you don't want them to be full size adults. All right. Let's get out of here. Second row, please. Because this is an Onyx edition, there is no option to have a second row bench. It's only the captain's chairs, but they are comfortable seats. You do have this cool like faux carbon fiber look right here. You do have cup holder right there. You have charge ports right here, more cup holders. There are 19 cup and bottle holders in the Subaru Ascent. So plenty of beverages for plenty of people. You get plenty of space in terms of shoulder room. I do have enough headroom, even though I also have the panoramic moonroof. And all Subaru Sense actually have a three zone climate control system. So I can independently adjust the temperature for the second and third rows as well. And no, there's no center armrest to fold down, but each captain chair gets its own adjustable armrest. So that's something. All right, let's go to the front row. So the black interior continues up front, of course, you know, totally black door linings with this kind of like faux carbon fiber shape here. You do have auto up and down front windows, power windows generally, power locks, side view mirror adjustment, all that. More bottle holders and those types of things down low in the pocket. You do get a uh, power adjusting driver's seat and plenty of buttons of things to play with over here. It is tilt and telescope steering. It is manually adjusted right there. As I told you, these are StarTex material seats, so they're water repellent, easier to clean, and they do have pretty decent upper bolsters, and I'll say adequate lower bolsters. It's not like this produces a ton of grip or anything like that, but I like support and, you know, could use a little more if it were offered. Those are real gauges on either side tachometer, speedometer. As you can see, the turbocharged engine only wants to go to 6,000 RPM, but you know, that's pretty common these days. And you do get a little screen in the center for to give you extra information. The steering wheel itself has plenty of buttons. This does of course have what Subaru calls eyesight. So that's adaptive cruise control. Those buttons right there, some media adjustments and those things like that. This gives you some options to adjust the screen in the center. And you do have paddle shifters, upshift, downshift, but you don't have any actual gears. It is a CVT. One nice thing on the Onyx edition is you also do get a heated steering wheel. Not going to use it now. It's June, but hey, it's nice to have for the fall and winter. Push button start. You do have an eight inch center console touchscreen right there. And because we have the $2,200 Onyx package, it does include navigation. And that same option package, by the way, is why we also have the panoramic moonroof right here. And let's skip ahead and show you that it is a powered privacy panel right there and tilt right there. Also, since we're up here, this is how you can turn on and off the lane departure warning and also the uh, forward collision alert, those, those systems. So if they seem to be a nuisance for you or if there's a particular reason you want these off, if you hold these buttons down, that will turn off those systems. And this is neat, a mirror to look at those kiddos in the second and third row, definitely the third row. Down here, here are zones one and two of the three zone climate control, and just above that, usual operation for the media and that kind of thing. You do have a pretty standard looking Prindle and a couple more cup holders. Here are the buttons for X mode and brake hold. This just kind of holds you in place if you're on a downhill and you don't want to start rolling backwards. And X mode plays with the CVT and will give you more slip in the clutch so that you have more torque to put to the wheels. So basically you get more engine revs for the same vehicle speed. 
Also, you have a couple more USB ports and an auxiliary port as well. You do get more storage down here, of course, and look at that, a coin holder. Remember those? And uh, it is nice and deep. Finally, above your center console touchscreen is an auxiliary screen right here that shows you temperature and time, and you can adjust this to show you more information. So if you hit this info button right here, it'll go through, show you different things if you wanna see it. Anyway, let's get back to the drive. Okay, let's talk powertrain. There is one and only one powertrain offered in the Subaru Ascent. It is a turbocharged 2.4 liter flat four engine, horizontally opposed engine, or what Subaru calls a boxer engine. It is the exact same engine that they use in the Subaru Outback Wilderness, and it makes 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. As I mentioned in the walk around when we looked inside the car, we do have paddle shifters, but we do not have gears. This is a continuously variable transmission or CVT, but Subaru has eight built-in ratios into the CVT transmission software so that they act like gears if you want such a thing. In the Onyx Edition, you get 20 miles to the gallon in the city, 26 miles to the gallon on the highway, 22 combined. Now, those numbers aren't that great, but they're actually very competitive with a number of three row SUVs out there. So actually considering the size and weight of this car, it's pretty decent. And if you do get the base or premium trimmed Subaru Ascent, the numbers do increase slightly to 21 miles to the gallon in the city, 27 miles to the gallon on the highway, 23 combined. And while fuel economy is important, it's not nearly as much fun as accelerating, and we do have a turbocharger, so let's see how well the Subaru Ascent accelerates. All right, everybody, time for an acceleration test. I do have the traction control off. Let's see how it goes. Bit of brake torque, 2300 RPM, and off we go. Kinda soft, not really moving, but then we get up and we get going and it's no problem. Good good acceleration overall you know once we get up to speed the engine stays nice high revs and you get darn decent pull from this 2.4 liter 260 horsepower 277 pound-feet of torque is plenty to move this three row SUV around so nothing exciting about it but you know completely competent completely adequate yeah I'd say it does its job yeah pretty darn decent but since we're having a little bit of fun, let's have a little bit more and see how this car takes corners. Let me show you how it handles. All right, everybody, time for a handling test. I do have the traction control off, so let's give it a go. Now, yeah. reasonable pull. respectable grip not too much roll so good body control in general steering weight is awfully light so it's a little bit harder than ideal to be precise there's a bit of body roll <laughs> yeah so the steering's awfully light there is some body roll but it's nothing about it is under damped it's well controlled and the front end response is okay It'd probably be a little bit better if you would easily have um, feel of the front end. You just don't have all that much feel of that. But generally speaking, it's totally competent at what it does. Everything feels stable and easy and easy to control. And you have good comfort and support from the seats. I'd say about what you'd expect. And in terms of like feeling secure and safe, it's better than I expected. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. I've said it a few times, I might say it a few more. Three row family SUV, this is not your favorite Canyon Road Carver. So with that in mind, let's get to a little bit more of the meat and potatoes part of this car. Family trips, getting to work, those kinds of things. How does this car ride? Well, it rides pretty darn well. And that's true of roads like this or on the interstate. Let me show you that. Oh boy, oh boy, it is time for a freeway test. Okay. Traction control is back on, of course. This car also has a lot of driving aids, uh, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and more. So we're gonna give all that a feel, see how this thing goes, and uh, see how often lane departure warning warns us. 
Okay, cruise control is set and we are spinning around 2300 RPM, uh, cruising along just under 80 miles an hour here. And yeah, nice and quiet. We do have a little bit of wind noise, but it's ultimately pretty subdued. Road noise is a touch on the high side for an SUV of this size. Usually we're getting a little bit more subdued noise from the road, but uh, it's not bad. It's just a little higher than others. As far as the adaptive cruise control is concerned, you know, it's pretty much standard fare here, but I'm gonna take my hands off the steering wheel and see how this lane keeping assist reacts. So it's centering on the lane pretty well. Not too much trouble here, and it hasn't complained that my hands aren't on the wheel yet. So that's nice, that's plus. Now it's complaining to put my hands on the wheel. Generally speaking, this is a very comfortable car. The infotainment works really well and uh, the seats are very comfortable the steering wheel has controls on it all the other controls in the center console are easy to reach but it is a little bit louder than normal in terms of wind and road noise so that is a tiny touch underwhelming but otherwise yeah perfectly pleasant cruiser uh, nice soft supple ride and uh, yeah you could soak up miles in this thing yeah much more in line with what this subaru was built to do and Speaking of what this Subaru was built to do, it's actually a decent tower. Subaru says that this Ascent, any trim level, can tow 5,000 pounds. That is a number that is better than I expected, especially considering that this has a continuously variable transmission. Now, Subaru does call this a high torque capacity continuously variable transmission, but you're not used to seeing those kind of towing numbers with that kind of transmission. And 5,000 pounds gets you into class three, and that gets you into, you know, decent sized boat, decent sized camper, a lot of different recreational equipment. So again, useful for a family. And let's just keep right on going with this family theme, safety. Yes, the Subaru does have its fair share of safety systems. It has an adaptive cruise control and lane centering assist system called EyeSight. And in addition to that, it has several other driving aids that are pretty standard on cars of today. I'll go ahead and put the list up on the screen right now so you can see what we're talking about. Again, definitely competitive with other three row family SUVs. Objectively speaking, this is a great three row SUV. It has all the things that you need a three row SUV to have, space for up to eight people, depending on your trim you get. This Onyx Edition gives you seven. You have plenty of space for stuff if you'd rather carry stuff, but if you have stuff and people, it's still adequate there. You can tow a darn decent amount. You got all the safety things you need. You got a huge amount of charge ports and cup holders and those types of things. You have all the uh, infotainment you need from the center console, panoramic moonroof to let in a lot of natural light. And the Onyx Edition does have a distinctive look, a little darker, a little meaner, those types of things, you know, the black accents here and there. But more than anything else, this is very competitive with all the other mainstream products out there and kind of takes away some of the distinctive Subaru-ness that you get in other models. Yeah, you still get the flat four engine, the horizontally opposed four cylinder engine. And yeah, of course, all wheel drive is standard in the Subaru Ascent, comes on every trim level, and you do get neat little things like the X mode to give you just a little bit more torque to play around, a little bit more gear ratio to work with. But what's most amazing about the Subaru Ascent even this Onyx Edition is how similar it is to other three row SUVs in its class. So what's gonna make the Subaru stand out compared to the others is gonna be your personal taste and priorities in certain things. You know, the fact that you have heated seats and a heated steering wheel and all wheel drive, those are all great things if you live in the snow belt like I do. Or maybe the styling of the Onyx Edition really captures your eye. But what I'm getting at is Subarus are usually very obviously Subarus, and this is the least obvious Subaru you can get. But maybe you're kind of just curious to see what that lifestyle is like, and you have a family. Well, what this car will do will give you a taste, an amuse-bouche, an introduction into what Subaru driving is like. I'm Robin Warner, 
thank you for watching. And if you are still watching, I'd really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Those two things really do help me out quite a lot. Okay, goodbye. All right, gotta get to the family.